Hi there, today we're taking a look at something uh, quite remarkable. It's a small multimeter that I got off of eBay for 5 US dollars. Let's open it up and see what it can do. But first of all it comes in a nice cardboard box with print on it, which must have cut, cost some money. Uh, then we have the meter itself, which is a, it's a decent sized meter, it's not microscopic. And it's cling wrapped. Um, and there we go. And it comes with uh, two probes. And a manual. The meter itself is uh, obviously made from plastic and um, the quality is, uh, I wouldn't say uh, good, but it's not too bad either. Uh, it feels a little bit flimsy, uh, but it's hard plastic. It's not the cheap soft one that gets scratched uh, easily. And um, a good thing is that it has a battery compartment. You don't have to open it up and, uh, and, and destroy the plastic to get to the battery compartment. So let's put in a battery and uh, see, oh, that's a tight fit, there we go, uh, it's actually uh, possible I think to put the battery in the wrong way around, so be careful when you change battery. Uh, look at that, the display is uh, very high contrast which is surprising. Okay, you can measure DC up to 1000 volts and down to 200 millivolt range. Resistance is from a 2 mega ohm down to 200 ohm, then there's a diode checker and uh, there's a, <coughs> a transistor tester which is uh, definitely rubbish. Then there's a 10 amp range um, current input and uh, AC voltage from, from uh, 200 microamp to 200 milliamps and then there's AC voltage up to 750 volt. The probes are really cheap looking. Um, I guess they try to save plastic um, because the the wire looks okay and the banana plug looks fine but the probe itself looks really really cheap. I wouldn't want to use these for 230 volts uh, AC mains. Uh, that looks uh, outright scary. So if we look at the accuracy it's measuring something like uh, 0.2 volts uh, wrong compared to my uh, fluke. And uh, that's 2% and that's a little bit too much because in the user manual they promise uh, half a percent. Uh, but I guess 2% is uh, not too bad. And here I'm measuring a 10 kilo ohm 1% uh, resistor. My fluke says 9.99 kilo ohm. And, um, and if we try the multimeter it shows 9.98. So that is really within spec. And finally let's measure uh, current. And uh, on the current range my fluke shows here 9.95 milliamp. And uh, if we swap to the multimeter we get 10.05 milliamp. So we are also a little bit out. But uh, generally it's uh, performing pretty well considering the cost. Now let's open it up and see what is inside. Um, there are basically just two screws here. And that's it. If we look inside, there's basically a small square PCB with, uh, I think, about six resistors and the chip, which is just a blob top and a clock uh, generator circuit, I guess. Um, there's definitely a capacitor. And then we have a zebra strip and the display itself. The inputs are on a separate little PCB up here. And uh, that's basically it. Uh, so it's very minimalistic internally. The only thing though is that I wouldn't use it for 230 volts or any other high voltage for that matter. If you look at the layout of the PCB, it really can't handle that kind of voltages. The distance between the tracks here are just uh, not wide enough. 
So the verdict for this meter is that um, it actually works pretty well and uh, quality wise it's, it's quite decent. Uh, of course for five dollars there's a limit to what you can get but I'm definitely going to buy a few more of these uh, so that I uh, have a few in the car and uh, also in the lab here because sometimes it's quite useful to measure both voltage and current uh, at the same time. Just one thing before I sign off. Uh, I would put a little diode here between the plus terminal on the battery and the meter itself. Because if you mount the battery wrongly, uh, the meter chip will burn. So yeah, put a little uh, short key diode in series with the power supply wire here and uh, I think you have a pretty decent little meter. And that's it, yeah. Thank you for watching and uh, see you again soon.